Another cool feature in version 4.1 is health monitoring. Um, health monitoring is something we've been talking about for a long time. Um, basically a dashboard to allow uh, administrators and partners to go in and do some troubleshooting uh, with more insight into what's actually going on in a system. Um, to access health monitoring, um, it is available in the server web interface. So you're going to have to go to the server web page. So you can do that by on Windows by clicking on the trade tool and er, opening up the server web page. The alternative way is just to go to the IP address of the server that you'd like to see the health monitoring on um, and log in with, with the port 7001 um, and, and get to your server web admin interface. Um, so I'm going to log in here. You can see we still got the same tabs. You got settings. You've got the client still. Um, what was called the health before is now monitoring because it's just looking at the live um, feed coming from the server. Um, but you still got your storage and your log files there. I mean, your four developers tab is still there. And then information is where health monitoring resides. So information is, gives you basically system info. Um, your home screen here is a dashboard that shows you the number of issues that are going on with servers, uh, cameras, storage locations, and NICs. Uh, you can go in and do some filtering by it. So if I wanted to look at one server as opposed to all servers in a system, I can go in and do some quick uh, kind of filtering. I can look for like individual issues with that, right? Um, same thing with the types of alerts, warnings or errors. Um, a warning is less significant than an error. Um, so uh, errors are denoted by the red uh, uh, exclamation point triangle. Um, and the warnings are going to be denoted by um, the ugly yellow bell. So, <laughs> um, so this is your dashboard. Um, once you go into system, you can really see the, just the information about that system, the number of servers, the number of cameras, number of storage locations, users, and the version of the software you're running. Under servers, you're going to be able to see the, the servers that you have in the system. If they have any issues, they'll be highlighted like this one is. Um, the status of that server, uh, the number of times it went offline in the last 24 hours, um, the uptime, CPU usage, um, the CPU um, usage by the by the server application itself, RAM usage, RAM application, RAM usage by the server itself, um, public IP address, uh, operating system time, and then um, kind of events that have occurred at that server location. Cameras, you're going to see this. Uh, detailed information, the, the server that the camera's on, um, what type of device it is, a camera encoder, um, that uh, I.O. device, um, the IP address, uh, re recording is enabled or not, uh, the status of the recording, um, the number of events uh, for the camera going offline, the number of events for stream issues, the resolution, the frame rate for the primary, the average uh, dropped frames, um, and then the same thing for secondary. And then finally, storage analytics. Um, how long is the archive uh, right now? Um, what's the average recording rate for each camera? Right, All indicators in terms of like, oh, what's going on? If you've got a camera that's doing insane uh, bit rate but shouldn't be, well, then that, that's probably a problematic camera. Um, storage locations, um, same thing. You're going to see all the paths for the storage, uh, which server they're assigned to, what type of storage is, local NAS, um, status, the uh, number of issues in the past 24 hours, the read and write rate, um, and then the total amount of space that you have in that storage, and the percentage of the storage that is being taken up um, by the archive from the BMS itself. Um, the network interfaces, same thing. You're going to see which NICs you have, which servers they belong to, whether they're active or not, um, what IP address they have, and then the I.O. rates. In terms of in and out, you can see here, you know, I'm not really using a lot of in uh, or sorry, out on the my uh, desktop. So I'm not really pulling a lot of video from that device right now. So um, one other thing to note is that there's this download full report button here. Um, if you click that, it's going to download a JSON file. Um, a JSON file is not human readable for the most part, unless you're like someone who lives in the matrix. Um, or a developer, um, but uh, this is for our support team. This is for tier three level support. Basically, if you have a customer system, um, in the past, what we'd ask you to do is do like um, enable debugging and then do a download, uh, a dump, 
um, grab all this information and there was a little bit of manual work involved in terms of like troubleshooting now um, with this it allows us to basically pull out all that info uh, and give it to our support guys who then import it into their own interface that gives them some additional information about the state of the system um, and it really just aimed at helping us do faster troubleshooting um, so this is what health monitoring looks like right now it's completely free um, it's on every single server application um, and like I said, it's primarily at this point for helping us to support uh, more quickly and efficiently. Um, as we go along, a lot of this info is going to make its way up in the cloud. Um, we're going to have a, more of a um, holistic approach to health monitoring across all systems. But this is the first step, you know, um, finding out what's going on with the system at a local level and making that information available to our support teams um, so we can really start to kind of elucidate what, what information is really useful. Um, and then you know highlight that information for our, our customers and our users out there so health monitoring in 4.1 very cool feature